Hello everyone, I'm Marty Durham with Wizards of the Coast Publishing. Welcome to another edition of uh, Book Nook Gen Con. We're here today with the latest author in our, of our uh, Magic the Gathering Planeswalkers novel. Uh, this is Laura Resnick, author of The Purifying Fire. Hi Laura, welcome to the Book Nook. Thank you for inviting me. So uh, tell us about your interpretation of the Planeswalker Chandra Nalar. Who would you say she is? Well, first of all, I would say her name is pronounced Chandra. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Woohoo! You just witnessed a Marty screw up. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I first learned about Chandra and I started looking at the material that was available about her, Chandra mostly burns things down and blows stuff up in the comic and the cards. And I thought, well, we'll need more than that to get through a book. So I started thinking about fire, fire being angry. What makes someone that angry? Right. And that had a lot to do with it, because what they really asked a writer to come in for is to take this character and turn her into a character for narrative fiction and a protagonist. So Chandra is young. She's fairly new as a planeswalker. Um, I think she's very impulsive, and she's not that well educated as a planeswalker. Oh. She had a teacher, but not for very long, so she's sort of learning as she goes, and a lot of the book is a learning experience for her about being a planeswalker, about having this much power, about who she is, and about addressing some of the things that make her so angry that she's always blowing up and burning down stuff. Well, would you say that there's any of her in you, or vice versa? Well, my friends would say, yeah, Laura's a <laughs> 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 But um, in general, not, not particularly, except that in writing a character who deals a lot with anger, that was fairly close to home. Um, apart from that, not so much. I'm twice her age, and uh, no, not that much. Well, now you got to create your own planeswalker for this novel, Gideon. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now what makes Gideon tick, and how does he play off Chandra? Well, it was really fun to be invited to do that, to create a planeswalker. Um, it was a nice privilege, really. Uh, I really, there were certain qualities that um, the, the creators of Magic wanted Gideon to have, and then everything else was left up to me. I really wanted someone who was an opposite to Chandra, that there was friction, that there was balance. Gideon, very unlike Chandra, is someone who always thinks ahead. Ah. He thinks ahead, he's very well educated about many things, including about being a planeswalker. In absolute contrast to Chandra, he had a very involved teacher who spent a lot of time with him, who taught a great deal to him. There's a conversation Gideon and Chandra have where we learn that you know, her first ever planeswalk and how she experience the spark was so completely different from his, that they come from totally different places, and they have to learn to rub along together uh, during the course of the story. So it really is a meeting of opposites who find things in common. Nice foil. Mm -hmm. yeah. A foil, yes. So now, recently, you participated in a, a marathon discussion thread on one of the Magic uh, fan sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we are actually still doing it. I've just started a contest. They can win a free copy of a different book I wrote. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now, how was that experience, interacting with fans on such an intimate level? Well, it's fine. I mean, I do that a lot. I think with the advent of the internet age, writers interact a lot with readers. Uh, the Magic fans, I found pretty much like readers anywhere, except that I would say uh, they feel really invested in the world building and in the premise and in kind of the whole, you know, you have a very enthusiastic group of readers in yeah. Magic, very invested and very interested. And one of the things that emerges is they ask me things about the book that I can't answer because they know <laughs> a lot more about Magic than I do. Yes. So now you are a, a fairly prolific writer. Mm -hmm. You uh, work on several other, other series over which you have complete control. Mm -hmm. So now, were you wary of taking on uh, shared world fiction like this? I was very wary of it because it was brand new, but I believe in doing brand new things. Um, it was definitely a different experience. Um, I approached it as a way to expand my skills and expand my own learning, and I felt that I got a lot of support from Magic, from the people there, in right. making sure I knew what was going on. So now you grew up around writers? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So when did the writing bug bite for you? It didn't. I'm still not sure I want to write, and I've done 26 <laughs> books, so I should probably just settle down. <laughs> well, do you remember what your first story was? Um, not so much, really. I, 
I grew up in a writer's house, was surrounded by writers my whole life. I think I did a couple of short stories as a teenager, but uh, pretty much the first time I ever got serious about writing, I was uh, 24 years old, I was deep in debt, and um, I was looking for a way to pay off my overdraft at the bank, and I read a book called How to Write a Romance and Get It Published, and I thought, because I had grown up in a writer's house, well, if I write six romance novels, maybe I'll sell one. So I wrote three and thought, I'll start sending them out. And based on the feedback, maybe I'll learn a little bit more about what to do with the next three. Right, and instead, right. I sold the first one. But I was so unsure about the whole writing thing because I'd grown up among writers. I knew how right. insane they were. <laughs> uh, I had actually sold four books before anyone but my closest friends knew. I, people would say, what do you do? I would say, oh, I work in a restaurant. Because I just, this was not really what I was going to do with my life. But it turns out, it's my destiny. Oh, well, great. <laughs> so now, are there... Any writers that you look to for inspiration? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, certainly, and without wishing to sound corny, and he hates it when I do this, but certainly my dad, Mike Resnick, who's a science fiction writer, is one person, mostly because he is such a pro. You yeah. know, there have been times when I've been so angry or depressed about my career, and my dad will say things to me that really give me perspective. He, one of his sayings is, you know, right, long hours, low pay, unfair conditions, terrible competition, big disasters. Well. You wanted to be a writer. <laughs> and um, another is when things are bad, he says, well, you know, s sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. The wheel never stops turning in this business. And so far, that has definitely proved to be true. Um, and I have seen my father, who's obviously older than me, go through the same thing. You know, when right. things are good, he doesn't get a swelled head about it. When things are bad, he just says, well, keep trying. You know, knocking on doors, something's going to turn up. I have never seen him be bitter or whiny or other unattractive traits that writers can possess. <laughs> and that's always really been tremendous to me. And, of course, I you know, see the private person who handles all this so well. So this is your first Gen Con. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what would you say is your impression of it so far? I think it's so cool. Um, there's, I was in the exhibitors hall, and there are you know, these giant dragons, and there's weapons and swords, and there's people in costumes, and um, there's fabulous furniture, and there are all these wonderful 3D miniature exhibits, and we saw some kids like playing a life-size game. So it's really fun. I I've been impressed, yeah. Well, great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Laura. I'm glad mm -hmm. you were able to stop by the Nook today. Well, thank you for inviting me. No problem. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll see you again from uh, Book Nook Gen Con. Woo! It's a scorching read.